Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Hill Yourself, and today we're gonna to talk about diet again. We're actually gonna get into the nitty gritty of my thoughts and the actual best foods and the actual diet that I subscribe to now and why diet is such an important healing foundation for healing yourself, so let's get into it. So for those of us um, who are confused by diet, who have tried many diets, who have gone carnivore, who have gone raw vegan, who have gone paleo, who have gone paleo AIP, who have done GAPS, who have done walls, who have done uh, low FODMAP, who have done low lectin, no lectin, who, all kinds of diets, right? So the basic template of diet is pretty much the same for every human being, right? There's a healthy diet for humans, but then we also bring our own genetics to the table. So I've done a lot of genetic testing in the past. I understand how to read the genetics. So, and we also bring our own um, history, our past history, like our, we also bring our culture to the table. Do you have more Scandinavian in, in you? Or do you have more African in you? Like where are your, where's your ancestry coming from, right? Where were you evolved from? Were you evolved, you know, mostly were you eating a European diet or the tropics or in Japan? So these types of things also play a role. So not only your genetics, but your history and your DNA being where you evolved from on this planet and this earth. And then also our thoughts, you know, how we've been programmed by society to believe about certain foods and certain diets. Like, where did you go to school? What were they teaching you? What did your parents tell you? What was the, what was society, you know, handing you as a healthy diet? What did you soak up in your mind and start to believe? And there's also what the government supports in your country or your culture, right? Are they buying and producing mostly corn, mostly grains, or is it mostly soy? Like what, what are you being led to believe is the healthiest thing? What is in their food pyramid? What are they supporting? What are they financially subsidizing? So we have all three of those things playing out when we're, when we're looking at diet. Let's not get sidetracked. Let's not get sidetracked on the basics and the foundation that there is a better human diet for most of the population. And the tweaks are just that, they're just tweaks. So with diet, we need to start with whole foods from the earth. So was it grown by the earth? Was it produced by the earth? And not manufactured in a plant or they come in a box and they have preservatives and additives and all kinds of ingredients that would go rancid if they were left out, right? Is it fresh? Is it whole? And is it from the earth? And if you answer yes to that, that's number one. Number two is that it has to be organic. So we want these foods to not have been sprayed, to not be sprayed with pesticides, chemicals. Um, you know, this soaks into the food and then we ingest it. We also wanna have animals. We wanna be eating animals, nose to tail. We wanna be eating the whole animal, the whole fish. We wanna be eating them not from factory farms, but wild or pastured, grass-fed, or you know, on organic grasses. These are the animals that we want to be eating. And we need the meats, we need the fish, we need the organ meats, we need all the fats and the amino acids that they provide, and the vitamin D and vitamin A, right? We, we, we definitely need um, to be eating organic, whole, wild, grass-fed, and that's number two. So after you're eating whole and organic and you're cutting out all the refined and the junk food and anything that's um, conventional and been sprayed, then you're, you're pretty much left with, you know, the two camps that fall in eat meat and don't eat meat. And so I'm in the eat meat camp. Like I said, I've been raw vegan. Definitely, I think that including meat in your diet is a very important so that you can get all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the healthy protein and fat that your body requires. Um, it's how our ancestors ate and it's definitely important for good health, for good human health and for healing. And for that matter, I don't subscribe to the carnivore diet either, even though I was a staunch supporter at one point. You definitely need vegetables. The human body was designed to eat vegetation in the wild, to eat plants. I mean, we were born, we were created, we evolved from eating meats and eating plants. Herbs, roots, stems, 
uh, plants, lettuces, greens, we were evolved to eat this. And our body is adapted over time to all of these different vegetables and it's extracting different minerals and nutrients from them that the human body definitely needs. So I actually think, you know, and that's when we get into keto, it's a very high fat diet. And while I agree with the keto diet in some aspects, and I was a staunch supporter and I did the keto diet religiously for a long period of time, I definitely believe it's not a long-term diet. We weren't meant to be in starvation mode constantly. We weren't meant to be in regeneration mode constantly. Right? Humans were evolved to eat to eat daily, to, to really live off the land. And so, yes, there were periods of famine. Yes, there were periods over the winter when there wasn't any food, but humans were resourceful and they found a way to catch food. So being in ketosis, particularly long-term, I don't believe in either. So I do see the benefit of all these diets short-term. All these diets have wonderful short-term benefits, but as a long-term human health diet for, for health and longevity and healing, I definitely lean towards a paleo template simply because it's full of fruits, vegetables, and meats. It's organic, it's whole, it's from the earth, um, and your, de your body is definitely getting the most nutritional value when you're eating a paleo template. Now it does limit things like grains and it limits legumes and things like this. I do believe that there are problems with grains and gluten and they're being mass produced and they're being sprayed with glyphosate and a lot of them are GMO. And in evolutionary history, uh, we wouldn't have had access to grains. They're very difficult, right? Picking off seeds and grains and, and cultivating, this has only come into existence once we had the Industrial Revolution and were able to do this through machinery, heavy machinery, right? So we wouldn't have found this a lot in our evolutionary history, a lot of grains or legumes. Um, but I don't think they're the devil. Uh, depending on if they're organically grown and harvested and sprouted and I, I think there's a place for them and particularly when you're looking at diets like the Mediterranean diet that is basically a, a paleo template but it allows some grains and it al allows beans and legumes um, a lot of these people from the blue zones are living long healthy lives and so while I do believe that grains and legumes and things that are mass produced that are more recent to our evolutionary history should be more limited quantity. Um, and sugars, we have a lot of refined sugars. We have sugar and everything. We wouldn't have had that access to that in the past. So while we should limit some things, we definitely shouldn't avoid altogether, right? Things like honey is natural and there's other natural sugars. There's a place for it, right? In fruit and a, a lot of people, you know, go so low carb that they do hurt themselves in a way. I know that I, even though it helped me in a way, I hurt myself when I was too low carb for too long. We need the sugars, we need the natural glucose in our body. We, we definitely um, can overdo it, right? We can overdo these things, but if they're natural, they're whole, they're organic, they're from the earth and they are not in a refined state, then I do believe there's a place for those. My view on diet now, after going through all the diets I have, after following all the diets to a T, subscribing to them like a cult and a religion, and really putting all my eggs in the basket that this diet was gonna heal me, and it never really did, I've come to the conclusion that although we're all unique and different, and like I said, we have different genetics, and we um, come, you know, some people, <laughs> where they were born in their, in their genetic history might lean them more towards eating fish and some people who, were, who came right from the middle of the land might be more prone to eating meats, right? But we're all eating a variety of plants and wild animals. That is just how we evolved. If you're a Northern European descendant, you wouldn't be eating bananas. It doesn't mean you can't eat bananas, but it just means that you have an affinity and your body has adapted to more to certain foods. But the human body is very quickly able to adapt to new foods and assimilate them. I think paleo is the absolute best template. I do believe though, that you shouldn't be so strict on paleo that you wouldn't allow in some grains, some legumes, and 
I know people get very bothered by the lectin contents and other properties in legumes, but I feel like they've proven healthy for a variety of generations and they're plentiful in the blue zones. So I do believe that um, there's enough evidence to support that they can be included in a healthy diet. I have a blend of the paleo and the Mediterranean template and it's all organic, it's whole foods from the earth, and we're trying to get a lot of nutrition. We are trying to get all the macronutrient groups. We want protein, we want fats, and we want carbohydrates. We do not want to eliminate one group of macronutrients, and we do not want to be too heavy on one group of macronutrients. We really do need them all for our body to function properly. We need all the micronutrients. We need the vitamins. We need the minerals from these plants and from these animals. And some things, um, just take vitamin A for example, yes, you can get it through carrots and it has to go through all these processes in order to break it down and turn into vitamin A when you're eating it from carrots. But if you go straight to the source, straight to the animal and particularly organ meat, then it doesn't have to do all these conversions. So it's a quick, simple, clean way to get it. So our body was designed to adapt and to get these minerals and nutrients in many different forms in many different ways, but to give it a variety of all the macronutrients are super important. All the micronutrients that you can fill it up on. The phytonutrients, we want all the minerals and the vitamins. We do, the human body needs all of this to function optimally and at its best. We don't wanna overeat. So we don't wanna to put too much work on our liver and our stomach to digest and process and clear all the food. So stopping, I would say when you're about 70 to 80% full, having smaller meals. I know a lot of people subscribe to OMAD. I did that for a while, one meal a day, and it's great. You definitely, the fasting period, um, will definitely extend life. And if you want to go ahead and fast, I believe that there's enough evidence to support this for the one meal a day diet where you're getting that uh, resting window of you know 16 hours. It can definitely help. But my fear with that is that if you're not, if you're only eating one meal, you're limiting a lot of food groups and you're limiting a lot of nutrients that you can get throughout the day. Um, simply because you're only choosing one meal and you can't get it all in one meal. So as long as you're not overeating and you are having a period of shutdown and rest and letting your body repair, then I believe that you should be able to eat often. I think that you should chew well. Chewing well is super important. Getting those digestive enzymes going in your mouth um, is very important into breaking down your food and digesting it and assimilating it. So again, how we eat is as important as what we eat. I do believe that juicing and making smoothies is really breaking these down. You can really get an infusion of vitamins and minerals by juicing vegetables. You can also get a, a huge amount of food when you make a smoothie. You can get you know, your six cups of greens in the morning before you even begin. If you break it all down really small into a smoothie and it's so much easier to digest and go through the body. I do believe that the human body needs fiber. It needs fiber. I mean, for the long time, I was against fiber, um, but I really do believe on all the research that I've done that you do need fiber to push through your digestive system and and to make it healthy. The, the bugs in there, definitely your microbiome thrives with when it has fiber. Okay, so we want to give our microbiome a variety of things. We want to make sure that we have enough good bacteria and in our gut and in our microbiome. And we get this by eating many different forms of plants, vegetation, fiber, and, and even cultured foods can help with this. So I do believe that it is good to get a little bit of fermented dairy if it comes from cows that are healthy and grazing on grass. And even though paleo does not, allow dairy and milk because we wouldn't have found that in our evolutionary history. I do believe that some cultures, particularly uh, Scandinavian cultures and some Northern European cultures that have really adapted 
to drinking milk, the Maasai, right? We've really adapted to drinking milk. It is a safe mammal food. It's the first food for humans. Now, it may be unnatural to drink another species milk, but I think that we've adapted to be able to handle that. And I don't think it's the devil like a lot of people think. And so this is where you blend the paleo and the Mediterranean um, diet together and you say a little bit of dairy is okay. That's what they do in the Mediterranean. And like I said, in the blue zones, they do end up living longer. But I do believe the foundation of your diet should be vegetables and it should be animal products, nose to tail. We should allow some fruit in there, some nuts and seeds, um, and some other foods. Little bits of, of dairy and legumes and have a plentiful, rich, fiber-filled and vitamin-rich and mineral-rich diet. And this is what we're aiming for, right? This is what I believe, after everything I've been through, is the best diet. But if you haven't seen the video I made yesterday about food and how we use our mind body and we marry it to diet, which is more important than anything. Okay, our mind is more important than anything. So if you have not seen that in video, it is the foundation. It is super important. It is even more important than what we eat to heal ourselves. And a lot of people would say food heals you. And I believe that. I believe food is a, an important component to healing. There is no doubt. But the mind is more powerful. And it is so much more important that you understand what I said. And I'm going to link this video in this video. Because it is the key. It is truly the key. How you feel about what you're eating. What your stress level is about what you're eating. Is more important than the foods you're eating in the end. So... Watch that video to really find the best diet, the best foods for healing the human body from physical, mental, chronic, degenerative diseases and illnesses. I hope this video has been helpful. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.